speak now. in the guillotine position. It's, uh, it's in, in, inexplicable. Hopefully not first thing in the morning. <laughs> but hey, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, for this one, we're going to start with the overhook, right? Because what we like, um, I don't really need to show you. This one's overhooked. Um, I like to keep this arm in here because of the darts that opens up with this guillotine, right? Um, by having this arm already in, it means I don't have to try and shove it in uh, later on, which I would have to do if I didn't have it in there already. So. We're guillotining, and what's nice about this is, for the most part, like it's pretty reliable that if you guillotine a person, they're going to take a, this hand here, and they're going to try and rip your hand off their neck. Right? Ah. And that's great, right? Because ah. what that does is that sacrifices the base. So right, I can't take his queen, but I take his bishop, and I'm just going to pop him over here, right? So from here, I still have my little grip, right? What I want though is I want to use like. Uh, this grip to help me come up. I also like to kick with this foot, but I'm going to come up, and as I come, I'm going to use the grip to turn him onto his side, right? And then once I come up onto my knees, what I'm going to do is like, right? So where I want to use this arm that's going to be over his head, I'm going to shove his, his chin down into his chest, right? I want to make him smell his, his own crotch, right? Like really break down his posture there. At the same time, this arm is going to be driving up, and I actually want to like, curl my body up so that my shoulder uh, can drop down into this space and I'm able to get it as tight as possible. So we're starting in our little grippy here. I come up, and I'm going to use this arm to push down, this arm to come in, and I want everything to be squished in nice and tight. Right? If I need to, I can hold on to this here and bring my elbow back again and then re-dig it down but that's probably not necessary, right? I want to get my rear naked choke pull grip here, right? Nice and deep with this hand here. I don't want to grab with my hand if I can squeeze it farther in, right? Because the further in it is, the tighter the choke is going to be. And I want it to get uh, as flush as possible with his neck before I even start squeezing, right? So I'm going to get this in super deep. And then this hand, right, that's going to walk up his back. And what that does is that helps raise this form up into the bottom of his neck, right? And then once I get everything kind of feeling cinched in, now I like to drive my chest into his, uh, what is that, your shoulder and his tricep. I want to squish it into his neck, right? And I can come off my, my feet here and I'll start squeezing until something taps or pops. Yeah. Right? And even if uh, he doesn't like grab here, uh, this is still a really powerful enough guillotine. You should be able to launch him over their hand, even if you're trying to face out. Can I try? <laughs> I don't know how, or how much I can. I mean, if I'm basing out, aren't you just going to guillotine me? Yeah. Right? I mean. But I'm going to try and guillotine you in a way that flips you over. Oh, okay. So whatever happens, you know, I'll, I'll take either. Either, either one. Yeah, like yes, really. I do not recommend. <laughs> I don't recommend that at all. Sorry. Yeah, I don't want nothing by doing that except in pain and suffering. Sorry, I didn't know it would be that bad. No worries, it's fine. You hear gurgle? I wonder if that gurgle went tape. That was pretty good. That was a good gurgle. All right, so we're going. Ooh, we're following it up, right? And then I'm going to get this nice and deep, set as deep as you can, right? We're going to walk this up, and then now I'm going to drive with my my chest into his. Uh, tricep shoulder area and I like to pinch my elbows in and then shrug all at the same time until uh, he doesn't want to be there anymore. Start the pull. 
The pole? The, like, the thing here? Yeah. yeah. Do that. I go down, squeeze, and then... That is too much. Start the long one. Well, I didn't finish. I'm right. oh, sorry. Thank you. You're right. I want, I want to make sure that people are fully aware of That's the true. possible ways of uh, the full gamut of suffering that you can encourage yeah. or impose. Well, for me, I think that there's like three things that you do when you're trying to finish the Dars. And that's after you you set it, right? So once it's all set and it's as good and set as it can be, one of them is pinching the elbows in, the other is driving the chest in, and then finally I bring that last elbow up. And the first two kind of tighten up two sides and the last one just like cuts it up in there and it's really nice. That's the piece de resistance or the, what's the, the coup de gras. Mm, yes. Coup de gras. I can't go, am I even on camera? Over there. <laughs> That's a good I'm one. a disembodied voice, the coup de gras. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, I so I usually, I, I don't know if you, I, I save it for last after the, the elbow pinching and the driving. Um, I don't drive as much. Um, I don't know. You do a different thing, don't you? I don't. I don't. I try not to drive in because I'm always. I mean, I don't feel like I can tip you over. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of the uh, your base is a little different, but I'm always sort of like worry. Maybe it's the angle that I take that I'm going to get rolled through, yeah. which isn't the end of the world because you can still finish from there. Yeah. But uh, I don't like to lose top position if I. Right. I think so, you've told me before that you like to tangle up the legs. Is that so I've it? seen that before. Some people have talked about that. Where from here, I go the other way because my right one is better. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a favorite side, right? That's true. So it's here, here, and then what I've seen are people they'll hook into the leg. All right. So if we turn that way, so people can see the leg. No, no, other way. Hook here. So here, you come in, and then they step over and they grab that. And so it's the same idea like I'm kind of um, putting you in a cradle almost, mm -hmm. right? And it becomes very difficult for you to move, uh -huh. right? Because you're just all in this kind of super curled up position. People um, tend to try and re-guard in that position anyway, so it's... Well, yeah, so if you're here, right? And I'm like, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna try to grab my leg. Yes. And even this is hard because especially I have bad hips, but you know, if I'm trying to like drive into you or squeeze, and then you're pulling on my leg, yeah, or, or the lockdown, any of that stuff, and your my hip is getting pushed back that way, mm -hmm. you're inherently taking pressure off of your neck, my ability to kind of pressure down. So you don't like that. You like the there's a way a specific way you're doing. So, I think if you don't want the person to be able to hook your legs, then you're going to have to do something about that, right? Like this is something that can happen, right? Like where the person is going to tangle you up in some way. It's like a, it's like a lockdown when someone's passing, yeah. right? You get the chest to chest, you're feeling good about your pass. Someone slaps the lockdown on you and now all of a sudden it's like I can't, I don't have any more forward pressure, I have no ability, and my leg is stuck. And then depending on who you're training with, some people have a very nasty bottom lockdown um, where they can do knee bars, they can set up sweeps. I've had, I had one guy who, when I was in Paris, uh, I was training with this guy and he, and he almost tore my leg off. I mean, he basically set me up to, to let me get into half guard. And then he slapped on the hardest lockdown I think I've ever had, he was a big guy. Yeah. And so he just like, and I had to sweep myself, I had to roll over so that I didn't like my, I felt like my hip was going to like yeah. disconnect from my, from my body. I like that. So, and he was very aggressive with it, but yeah. it's the same idea of, you know, if we're here and I want to get, you know, all my weight down or yeah, if you start messing with that and you turn my hip now, and now you're going to get that, maybe you can turn me, you know, like you can roll over me, yes. And you drop me down to a hip, and now it's no good. So I guess the, the value, the kind of twofold with this trapping the leg, is if you can get it, you can kind of nip all that in the bud, right? Okay. You're not going to mess. If I can get here, right, and then I somehow manage to capture this top leg, 
Mm-hmm. Right? Now you're not going to be able to like mess with my hips anymore. Yeah. In a meaningful way, right? Because now it's like I've got your... Yeah, you're able to turn towards it. Right? And so you're, you're not... It's just this bottom leg is the problem. Well, not really. I shouldn't say that. It's this being able to get to the outside and scrape my leg over. That's interesting. And you're torquing my hip. I feel like you should still be able to finish, though. You can, but you, I mean, it's just a question of, like, when does that person start doing it, right? So if you're able to, right, there's always that moment where you you get that first arm in, that bottom arm. Like yeah, and you can hook the head. But getting the second arm over is where the darts will, I mean, obviously you can still fail here, but if, even if you get here and you're not able to connect, yeah. I've been in a situation where I have the darts where it's just on my fingers yeah. and the guy's like puffs the chest out. And if it's a strong person or somebody has a good posture, that'll be enough to, you have to switch to something else. Yeah. So. Yeah, people get triggered if you grab their head like that. They, you know, well, they're gonna like me. The best, you know, like to to me, the way that I stay out of the darts is by posture. Yeah, and staying straight. And like if, if you get if you get my head like even this much beat, yeah. you're I'm in danger. I'm like that is because I don't like to me. It's like either I have perfect posture yeah. and I'm good, or I have slightly off posture and it's all going to hell. Right? right. I don't have a lot of margin for error. So when I'm in this position, the first thing I don't care about anything else is I just posture. When you're in your regular side control, are you like no. posture? No, because you're gonna be more relaxed. But as soon as I feel like this person is, you know, coming across like here, yeah, I'm, see how my fingers already, I'm not trying, like I don't want that person to do that. Yeah. This is over, like a, a, with, a, with a strong person, with a, I mean, it's, it's gonna be over for a bigger person. Because mm -hmm. my neck is just not, I'm not gonna be able to beat somebody and they have all their upper body kind of pulling because that's a pretty powerful movement to pull in. Yeah, but this is still this. Very it is, but if you have like a bad neck, yeah, or true. a skinny pencil neck like mine, I'm not going to be. It's it's too late for me to posture. Now, a more experienced grappler like yourself will recognize that chasing that, chasing that the person who's postured mm -hmm. is kind of like not worthwhile. But with more excitable and less experienced training partners they'll often chase it and then that'll get them in more trouble yeah right because they're trying to chase and you've already postured mm -hmm. and then it's not going to work you're not going to recover it you should move to something else and if you keep going trying to do the darts you're just kind of getting yourself out of position do you have some tricks to maybe get that posture broken down though that you want to share because i have one maybe you have one let me do mine and yeah. then you can do yours uh the one that i do is when I'm in here, right, I want to come over with my elbow. So sometimes, well, let me go back. I'll do a double leg, a double hold. So when I come in here, I don't come to the head and then reach over mm -hmm. and hope that I'm going to be able to close mm -hmm. my triangle, right? I try to go two on one oh. and pull. So like a tie clinch kind of thing? Yeah, that's a good, good analogy, right? So. I'm going to you recruit instead of like using one arm here, mm -hmm. right, and and then just trying to reach. And you're going to posture. Look, if you posture right now, I mean that's enough that I can't. Even if I can connect to this hand, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. Like it might be able to do something else, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be able to do the darts. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, what I try to do is I'll try to go two on one or here, right, and either right I'll try to break you down. Or if I can't pull you in, I try to pull myself in. <laughs> and now, oh, that's cool, right? So that's a, an old way of thinking of like if you can't pull the person to you, then you got to go to the person because yeah. it's just it's their posture. And now if their posture, if you can't break it, then it's just their arm, it's their shoulder. Yeah, like going around. So it, I'm not going around. I'm just like pushing down. Right, so look, if you come here, lay down again. If we're here, so if I'm here and I have two hands, and, and, and Kevin is super posture, here like this. Now if I, if I try to pull, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going against his back muscles, right, your neck and your, and your shoulders. But if I pull myself to Kevin, 
But why does that work? Then I'm only going against your shoulder. You're like collapsing this yes. as you go into it. Yes. That's crazy. So it's like you're you're gonna drive yourself in. That's something I think I learned from I'm sure we've done it a long time, but like I've learned that explicitly from Wade Shallows. Talk about cradles and things like that. So you can check it out. <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing this to you, because it's always gonna inure to my pain and suffering. Sword. Right, like so let's say we're here. How many times have we been here, Kevin? Where you get you get a good thing and I'm able to like really kind of posture. If you can pull my head, go. Right? Because I'm getting my hips into it. Uh -huh. But now, get your hands back in. Now pull yourself. Yeah, I can't stop that. Right? So now, yeah, see? You're like, yeah. So you didn't break my posture. Yeah. You collapsed my arm. Huh. So Here. So I'll keep my I'll try to keep my posture. So right now I feel pretty good posture. You're not gonna be able to get my my head down, right? But oh, that's cool. But you see how you're, you're attacking it's my like shoulder muscle. My shoulder is going. Like yes. In there. That's so there's no way because I'm here and I have the floor. Yeah. That's super cool. So now it doesn't matter. So sometimes you just have to like. Stop thinking about like trying to like force the person to break down and then just attack their shoulder. Can you <laughs> so use your other hand. Yes. See now. Oh. That's monstrous. It it makes a big difference in terms of like just I'm not gonna stop you. Yeah. I'm not gonna stop you. I don't think you can. And the other thing is, it's like, that's tiring. Like, even if I can hold off for a second or two, your whole body and pulling in and driving down. Yeah. So, however you get there, this is the nice thing about this. I'm sure this is something that Henzo showed me. Because Henzo is like, and John are just, they get you in this position. It's, it's done. I'm actually surprised. You don't see Gary and Gordon. You, you don't see them do Darcy's very often. Maybe it's the nature of their game. They're not playing top so much. They're, they're not pa you don't see those guys passing, yeah. right? Or they're passing, but only to get you to turn. Or maybe the guys on the bottom are too good, they're and they're turning instead of getting passed. That makes sense. So, but this is this is something like between the guillotine, and the Dars, and the anaconda. Those are like Henzo and John's specialties. Yeah. If they got you like this, or me anyway, it was it was done. I'm gonna assume I mean, that they didn't need to do if much. you played a guillotine game, you would find yourself in a Dars a lot. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? Henzo is famous for his beauty. Yeah. So the idea here is, again, you're not reaching over, right? But you're pulling in one way or the other, right? Either I'm going to bring him to me or I'm going to go to him. So then what happens is once I'm here, I can adjust. And then it's easy, right? It's, you're already here, so then it's almost like that. You're here. That's cool. So that's how I like to do it. Like that. That's what happens when you're feeble and you have to come up with clever ways to like impose your. That makes my thing look like garbage. But no, this is the thing that I do, and it might just be because I'm long. Um, but my thing is has been to step up with this knee here, yeah. right? And so, right, this is the idea. Like, if you're not strong enough to move them with your arms, your legs are probably strong enough to move them, right? So, I'm keeping. Bounce as they come up, and I'm gonna yeah. scissor this in <laughs> and get it locked in. Um, I like that too because you're actually rotating your body around, and you're gonna be able to get into other things too. Yeah, you can always abandon and go. Right. right. Like another one that I like is when you come over the head, right? If you come over the head, can you switch this over my head? Oh. Here, yes. And then now you have the arm. And that. Sorry. So. You know, I think you're, when you shoot darces, you're going to fail. There's, the failure is kind of built into it, at least initially. Yeah. But if you do stuff like that, you're going to wind up into a really nice a nice follow-up move. A nice follow -up move. I, I like the darts because, you know, you're keeping something in that arm space. And then when it fails, and it usually does, you can usually come up on that Kamara. And I like Kamaras. So... I like <laughs> so you have a nice combination because you're also really good at guillotines, right? And uh, so you have that guillotine to a darce 
I like that relationship too. Like when you're saying like you can go from the guillotine to the darts. Yeah. Right? Well, it's, the, it's a uh, natural. The head arm triangle is related to the guillotine, related to the darts, related to the anaconda. And then there's some weird ones mixed in there. But I like. Yeah. Yeah, those all go back and forth in between each other, and they're just like different, like different topologies of the same like grips it's they're all head arm triangles right like we've got our hands locked like this and his arm and one of his you know his one of his arms and his head sorry Stuck in. Yeah. Are, are in there somewhere in some orientation so there's also like the north south choke that's, mm-hmm. that's the same thing yeah yeah as long as the head is inside um whole bunch of stuff the way i saw it once this is an old video was the guy was saying uh that there's like a you know, on your knees this well, was no, but on all fours, I should say, is that you know when you're here, you know you have a guillotine, you have arm and guillotines, mm-hmm. right? And you can always switch off depending on what the person does, but you also have depending on where your arms are, you can switch off to either a dars or a you know anaconda. Mm-hmm. So, but the idea is like this is you know here's your dars type of position. You know, you have your front headlock with your head in your arm, right? Well, I like this one a lot too, mm-hmm. right? This is another way to kind of drop the person down and get in. That's the wrong arm though. So I would have to go this way, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, this way. That would be the right way. This way is anaconda. Yeah. With the rolling. Yes, but then you have all the other ones where... Well, you have the ones where our bodies are like this, right? Instead of here. Oh, right. Like so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends on the orientation. Yeah. If we, are we chest to chest? Are you head, feet that way and your back's on the ground? You're supine. <laughs> supine, I think is the right word. So what were you saying before? You were doing uh, I was going to say you also have like all those like kind of pinning things like the, where you can turn of... somebody. Like the power halves. And, yeah. uh, and so like, uh, man, we should actually be interesting to talk about all these different things where, I don't know, let's see, from here... And then, let's see, what you were doing was you were here, and then, oh, sorry, you backhand <laughs> them over, and then you walk here like this. Yeah. There's that one, and then there's the other manipulations. I think this one is from here, right? And you come in, you do that. That's, so that's over, right? That's kind of like a reverse half here. Yo, know, does technically the backpack count as one of these? I think it is in a way because it's a head and arm. It's so on head, the back though. Yeah, it's just that's like the other orientation. Yep. I remember this is the one that John used to torture us with. Right? When you'd be here, you'd be coming up, right? And then he would just, yeah. he would crunch you down mm-hmm. and then do basically that, some <laughs> version of that. Rude. I mean, sounds nice. I mean, that was his half guard pass, it was just like shoving your, your face in your crotch, essentially. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you would open up your legs and flatten out or else you'd break your neck. You hurt your neck. All right. Strong posture control type group. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think people do that. I mean, his, I mean, his game is different too. And this was a different era when he did, he didn't weren't as aware, I think, of like how devastating it was for somebody to be up on your neck. Like, I mean, you would know when someone did it, but you weren't as. I think people now are learning from, you know, the black belts from 10, 20 years ago who have back and neck problems yeah. and people don't do the same techniques anymore. Stacking is less popular. Um, but you don't stacks. see people letting themselves get into yeah. a stacking position, right? You're not, you don't see as many people they don't fight out of it. playing closed guard, Yeah. you know? Hmm. Anyway, is that all we want to do for Darces today? Is just a basic, I, I mean, the vanilla Dars is probably the, you know, one of the best things, you know, in terms of like how often do I use a Dars? Like that's, yeah. What I go for. Well, I do it specifically from the guillotine and maybe a couple other, like like you said, the front headlock position is really nice. And there are other random places where it comes, like usually you usually spot spotted around a guillotine. Um, but then like when you go into the anacondas, head arm triangles, there's a lot of territory we could start encroaching in here. Yeah. Just like all these different variations of head arm triangles. I mean, they have, I mean, one of the first times I ever saw a DVD that used the word encyclopedia in it was the Dars. Yeah. It's a Dars, Dars, a P, 
Wikipedia. I think Jeff Glover starts Wikipedia. Something like that. I think that's I what he calls Jeff it. Jeff Glover does. <laughs> <laughs> he, none of his DVDs have like, I mean, they have all have funny names. But uh, I think at least they're self aware. But they're, you know, the thing is, is like, you see a guy like Jeff Glover who can hit a darts and has hit a darts from everywhere. He's kind of like, you hit Kamurus from everywhere. Yeah. He, he's famous yeah. for hitting darts from every single position. And um, I mean, he his career is you know Darce is from weird weird places. You know, but that's uh, he also has just a like just the weirdest guard game. His his way of looking and thinking about jujitsu is yeah amazing. Like I think it I think he left like a significant mark on jujitsu culture and the way things are yeah. done. Yeah, and totally. I think again another underrated guy. Um, I don't think he's underrated. I think he's underrated. I don't I mean, think he gets as much love. I think people love him, but I, I don't think that he like when you talk about his technical contribution. Well, he just doesn't have the accolades, but like his technical yes, contribution true. can be seen in everywhere in jujitsu. That is true, but I mean that's what I'm saying, right? Like he just people don't appreciate when you when when you see like what like if you go back and you watch him, yeah, and you realize yeah. what he was doing when he was doing it. You know, you have like with the benefit of hindsight, you, you have a new appreciation of kind of like what a you know a pioneer or whatever he well, was. He was the first guy who made grappling interesting to watch, or like made that like one of the things that had to be done. He was super entertaining, and yeah, that's probably why he didn't win as many probably. things because he's a showman yeah. as much as he is, and he was just I mean he's I mean, he. He beat Kyle, right? Didn't he beat Kyle in the I first match? It was one to one, but yeah, he won the first one. And then he lost the second. I think because it was you know he's doing donkey guard in that match. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. and who does that? I mean, it's not like <laughs> I, I mean, love it. It's brilliant. It's funny. Anyway, yeah, we can continue on with all these and the anacondas yeah. and the darces. Really so episode one, stay tuned. Anaconda. What do you want to do next time? Darces. I mean, we just did darces. More darces. More darces. I mean, we can do more like where to get darces from. That'd be cool. Um, I'll have to think about, think about them. them. Yeah. Yeah. I more often than not I get a Dars off of just straight passing when the person turns. Yeah. And then they, they they're la hook. either they're lazy with that arm. The underhook from side control. That's fun. Underhook from side control. Like yeah. Like defending side yeah, control, yeah. that old school way of getting that underhook mm -hmm. and trying to come up and wrestle. Yep. There's a reason people don't do that anymore, and the and that reason is the Dars. The Dars. Alright. Cool. Nice. Cool. All right. Be good. Make good decisions. Of course. I was talking to them, not you. Oh. You always make good decisions.